So friends, have you ever thought, how does actually your mobile vibrates? Let us understand. So friends, let us understand how actually your mobile vibrates. If you have noticed that there must be some vibration, some source of vibration in your mobile. Because your mobile is a very compact device. It fits into your pocket. So let us understand what is that source of vibration which gives vibrations to your mobile. So basically you see what is vibration let us try to understand. The word vibrate comes from the Latin word vibrare which means to shake or to swing. It is defined as move or cause to move continuously and rapidly to and fro. This is the standard definition of vibration. To provide this vibration, we have two solutions. The first one is that we have an eccentric load DC motor that is unbalanced load DC motor. The first one is rotation with an off center mass. The most popular mechanism to vibrate your phone is a miniature direct current motor. Yes, you have heard it right. It is a direct current motor and it is really tiny. Its dimension you can see it is 10 millimeter long and 4 millimeter across and maybe even smaller. Let us understand little more about it. If the flywheel were centrally mounted on its shaft, the rotation of the motor would be smooth with very little vibration. It means if the loading to its shaft, the shaft of the motor is going to be uniform, then there will be rotation but there will not be any vibration. And what is our objective? Our objective is to get some vibration. To provide that vibration, a counterweight on the shaft is required to make it unbalanced. This is called eccentric rotating mass and it is abbreviated as ERM which give its name to this kind of vibrating motor. It is famous in the commercial purposes with this name ERM motor. Let's try to open your mobile and see where it is going to be located. You see this picture. Your permanent magnet DC motor which gives you vibration in your mobile is going to be working something like this. There is going to be two permanent magnet acting as the stator that is the stationary part and they are permanent magnet. They provide the main field, main field of the motor. Then this rotating part is actually the armature which we also call as rotor because it is the rotating part. This armature is going to have a closed winding. You know that in DC machines we have closed windings. And because of this flux cutting action, some EMF, some currents are going to be produced in the armature winding and there will be two fluxes. The flux because of the permanent magnet and the flux because of the currents in the armature winding. These two fluxes are going to interact with each other to give you a final output that is the torque. This torque is going to rotate, continuously rotate this rotor and because it is having an unbalanced loading, it is going to create continuous vibrations. This is the slow motion you can understand now well. This is the north pole, this is the south pole, this is a permanent magnet and this coil is going to rotate so that flux cutting action is there and because of this flux cutting action, EMF is going to be induced in these part of the conductors, in these part of the conductor. And with these EMFs, currents will be flowing in the circuit and the currents flowing in the circuit will lead to establishment of another flux that is armature flux. So the main flux and the armature flux are going to interact to give you torque so that the motor rotates with vibrations. Your DC motor which is having unbalanced load looks something like this. This is the eccentric mass counterweight. This is the eccentric mass counterweight. You can see very easily you can observe that it is going to be unbalanced. Then if you see actually how it is placed, it is something like this. It is a very uh, zoom in picture so that you can identify this motor. 
the second method that we have is using the resonance resonance condition a more durable way to achieve vibration in miniature sizes a linear resonant actuator a linear resonant actuator it is a coin size device that vibrate up and down rather than rotating it is not rotating it is vibrating up and down there is a coil of wire which is called as Weiss coil since the magnetic fields are produced by electric currents feeding an alternating current to the Weiss coil which makes the magnetic field alternate to and because of this alternation or variation in the magnetic field this disc actually vibrates up and down a little disc shaped magnet sits between the Weiss coil and a spring as the Weiss coil's magnetic field changes it pushes the magnet which moves up and down pressing on the spring so that it's a bit similar to how a loudspeaker works but instead of producing sound it is set up to produce vibrations at a frequency specific to the device requirement so it's working is similar to how your loudspeaker works you can see the diagram this actuator resonance actuator looks something like this in your mobile it is a very uh, zoomed in picture when they are used when these are used the vibrating disc shaped uh, linear resonance actuator only came into the common use in 2010s that is 2010 compared to the ERM motor that has been around in pages pagers and phones for some decades the linear resonance actuator is all enclosed so that there are no external moving parts and they consume very less power. So if you come across this question in the interview that which one is better in terms of the uh, power consumption then you can say the linear uh, resonance actuator is going to be using less power and wear out less quickly than the rotating motor of an ERM. LRAs stop vibrating quickly so they are good for the kind of touch feedback you get when pressing a virtual button on the screen so your touch screen mobiles they are having this kind of uh, LRA that is linear resonance actuator so that the on and off of vibration mode is very very smooth it's not like a uh, earlier you can say eccentric rotating mass motor because that gives not that smooth output in terms of vibration so this is all from my side for this session. I hope you enjoyed it. Do not forget to like and subscribe to Baiju's Exam Prep for all such important updates. Thank you so much.